Yeah. And I think that's where Sacred, you know, he's the OG. He's the original. And maybe it doesn't work out in every single pub he picks it. But I think uh, definitely a, a front runner for that type of offlaner was definitely, I think, one of the first ones to that party. But now, let's see. What's it going to be for speed here? Viper, super solid ban. Still could be the possibility of that 24 pick Nature's Prophet that Beast Coast have to be slightly wary of when they go for K1's hero. But... That's where the Seeker ban is interesting. I think, again, a lot of respect given over to what Hector was able to do in game one, but really didn't feel like he had, or in game two, didn't feel like he did very much, though, until those later stages where he had, again, a very farmed Batrider to play out and cause chaos in front of him. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if that maybe alludes to what hero that Fiverr want to go for. Typically, you would say Pango, Nightstalker. Those are the first two that don't want to play versus Bloodseeker especially, so... Maybe that's where Speed decides to take this draft, but definitely intrigued. And they say, okay, ban out the Tide. Don't want to have to deal with the Tanky Boy. Makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, now that you've mentioned it, I mean, Night Stalker does a lot of good things. If he picks up Blink, you're on top of Ember, Weaver, Disruptor. All three heroes that don't really do all that well, their mobility then gets taken away. So it's an interesting scenario five out to put themselves in before we get to see the choice though we do have to get this final ban out of the way and well they really can't go wrong in terms of a carry ban here basically no other carries had been taken out before that blood seeker so i don't know take your pick if they're looking in one direction in particular et maybe someone with a little bit more durability because with ember and weaver as the other two cores beast coast don't really have a crazy front line at the moment yeah, and of course, with the Weaver as your offlaner, it's where your Svens, your CKs, your Wraith Kings, every become, everyone becomes a little bit more useful. I think that's where Sven is really the only one pickable into Naga Siren, just because the other two hate dealing with illusions. They don't really like to make those trades. Maybe CK is slightly more okay with it, but uh, again, any blink stun is going to make Beast Coast lineup just easier to play. And I think that's where we should probably see them look for these, this last hero for Hector. I was thinking for a second, maybe there was like a TA pick, but probably not for the exact same reasons, even though it's something that Hector certainly can go for. But spending a lot of time here, Fyrat really thinking about it. Of course, the rest of the draft just blew by and they've certainly picked a whole bunch of heroes they've already played in the tournament. So maybe not having to think about too much of the draft. But look at that at the end of the day, Hoodwink gets ignored. I, hmm guess similar position that the hoodwink and the rana still hold but it's still funny to see yeah after all that sort of focus on the hero uh through the first couple of games letting it go entirely is a little bit strange but well, both teams kind of have that position for a hero so the hoodwink is going to have to be ignored for the time being as the sven is the call on that final ban so now if you're beast coast well what direction are they looking in do they try to force through an opposing illusion? Do they try the CK? Do they look uh, for something else, ET? They have a little bit of time left to think it over, but what direction do you think they should be going in? Well, the classic choice is just simply faceless. Of course, mm. faceless on 23 is a little dangerous and where you have to be careful. And no, okay. they decide to, and this time, actually give Hector the Alk. So same situation as game one where there is a very scary timing that five rat are going to have to deal with and a very similar position actually to game one there's a tusk there's a naga there's a jakiro really just running it back and i think is a lot less weak to that threat of the cheese specifically for the np where out can certainly fight in that lane a little bit more and speed what's it gonna be oh lichen okay i mean like it a lot it's maybe a hero that's going to have to concede a little bit in the lane and gives Hector quite the nice start, but will eat the rest of Beast Coast's lineup. Yeah. We'll just run it down, and Speed now gets to be in more of that carry position that we haven't seen for the rest of the series. He's just been playing Aura Boy support uh, 3.5, basically, but now he says, okay, Kits, step aside. I'm taking the bottom lane. I'm never letting it go. I'm going to become that monster and barrel down these towers, and now... DNM isn't everything. DNM can afford to maybe play a little bit more selfishly. He's not going to need to show up to every push. Just will hopefully buy him some time in a different way now. Even though the name of the game is still the same. Buy time for Naga Siren no matter what. Yeah, that you can't really get around that part. But 
Um, like you said, speed can now be responsible for more of this damage output, and it allows kits on the tusk to be almost single-mindedly focused on the initiation. He doesn't really have to bear as much of the burden of actually doing damage, which is where he's in his best position. Obviously, if he gets a Deso, if he gets some sort of damage item, great, that's good for him, but now it will be less necessary. His job will be to get in, to set up, Moose and AB1 will be right behind him with the follow-up stun, and you can rest easy, assuming that DNM and speed can then clean everything else up. Yeah, and of course, not a free game. You are giving a very nice start to the Alchemist in a lane that can be very difficult for speed early on. Not mm -hmm. to mention, if he ever shows in that lane without his ultimate, you know, 10, 11 minutes into this game, it's a super simple rotation for Dark Mago. Dark Mago is maybe not on that super free hero. Of course, Batrider would be able to make that rotation even faster, even better. The Ember is going to have to work a little bit harder, but it's still the same game plan. And I think that's where Beast Coast still look for their timing in a completely different field as Five Rat. Both teams still stubbornly say our idea is better. Yeah, and uh, the problem is we never really got a definitive answer to that because of what happened in game two. So, well, this game will have to be... Uh... Our final sort of what, data point in terms of that hypothesis. Look at me. A goddamn scientist. Look at me using all those words. But the point is, <laughs> differing styles. Which, honestly, is, is always kind of best, right? There is a certain degree of entertainment to seeing the two teams pick similar strategies and then just seeing who executes it better. But the, the actual clash in terms of different overall drafting philosophies kind of... I don't know, tends to make things look and feel a little bit nicer. No, for sure. And of course, it means that everybody's got something to play for. There's nothing worse than a, kind of a, a pissing match where everybody's just playing for the same thing with the same heroes and you just lose because you didn't get the best hero. That's where nobody, nobody thinks they're wrong, which, of course, we'll have to see because I think Beast Coast as well have a lot to learn from game one because they were in the hot seat. They were in a position to take that first game off of five rat and then they lose it really off the back of fantastic, some, some fantastic team fights from five rat. But we'll have to see now as Hector can they do dangerously this? close. I'm going to give it a go either way. A lot of damage. Oh, the arrow. Okay. Well, but they can certainly do it. If Moose is on point like that, there's your first blood. K1 gets taken down. You see the immediate shift over from Singer, though. They would love to not also surrender extra bounty runes off the back of this, but... Oh, never mind. Stinger actually wins the, uh, the right-click fight. And he's not going to be punished for it. Kits, even if the Ice Shards had connected, I don't know if they wanted to go all in for that. Um, it was... How exactly are you getting out of this one he's got a tp if he could find just a little bit of space in the tree line maybe he could give it an attempt <laughs> okay what well, says you know what enough of this i'm out of here you guys handle it and i well, think he, they're he gonna get it this creeps but yeah ron is definitely dead to rights interesting uh, i guess uh, assuming that schofield is on his way and doesn't want to get his tp broken just knowing that the clockwork's eventually going to catch up to him but uh, yeah a little a little peculiar but hey didn't give up first blood. All that matters. Mm -hmm. They were able to find that first blood pickup. We settle into the lanes and... Well... Yep, yeah, Schofield... I don't know how, how many opportunities you're going to have. And we talked about this last game as well, right? With the clockwork. You always have to make the attempt. Pop the battery, get behind them, just in case someone's not paying attention. But nowadays, it really feels like that's what is required. Someone has to not be paying attention for you to really do much more than just kind of tickle them yeah and Ooh. it puts a little bit of pressure on skill for this yeah not paying attention yeah nice little courier snipe but one thing that is necessary for sacred to exist here is eventually they have to get dominance over the sentry control and lane it's right. just going to be too much damage for sacred for him to shikuchi in for creeps while also tanking a creep wave and a dual breath it's just impossible as well does move forward a little bit of harass on the ab1 but that's where the illusions are extremely obnoxious in this lane and really should see them kind of give up on any play when those illusions are available because they just end up soaking way too much damage. And, well, actually, now's the perfect time to mention it because look at this spot on the sentry. It's so deep into the trees. It doesn't cover the entirety of the lane itself, but it's in a position 
where the opposing sentry just doesn't reach it. No, very good stuff, and Sacred will kind of know, and Skullfield even knows that it is in that uh, kind of east tree line, but still, it's going to be a, a battle. In the meantime, though, farm is farm. Nobody's really getting shot out of the lane so far. There's a slight edge for Dark Mago over in the middle lane, however. Not a crazy amount of last hits, but significant for just being a couple waves in, and I don't know. This, this is where things are going to get interesting. Not in the matchup itself, because I find it highly unlikely that either of these two make a big enough mistake to actually get picked off, but who gets the levels first, who makes the better rotations, is really going to dictate a lot of uh, maybe that 15 to 25 minute mark in terms of actual momentum. Yeah, and Dark Mega is, is just looking to be annoying. He is uh, getting more points up in the Flame Guard and then ends up being a pretty difficult trade for Kits. But it's also where Dark Mega is just being very efficient. Knowing that Kits doesn't have a bottle and no way for it to be refilled either, Dark Mega is just a bully. Mm -hmm. And this is actually kind of a, an interesting play. They have left speed just about on his own here in the lane while Moose is honestly jungling at level one. So... Well, as long as speed doesn't get punished, then this play looks just fine as, speaking of punishment, well, down bot, things are not looking great. AB1 gets taken down, DNM is unbelievably far forward as well, so Schofield, well, you know, I said before, unless someone's not paying attention, he's not likely to get a play going, but, I mean, they're, they're all the way up, they're past their own sentry vision at that point, and eh, it doesn't end well for them. Yeah, ab has got a single pull, but it still has a sentry in his small camp and just was unable to bring it back. And sure, Sapin and sharing a lot of XP with the Naga Siren and Hillfield doesn't end up taking that, but still feel like they're getting what they want here. I think the reason that they have the Marana jungling right now and really stacking, doing not Dota things is just because of the gold that Speed was able to get before, but they keep on that play bottom. It doesn't end up resulting in a kill for Fire Rat, but still very efficient, good damage traded out. They are getting some good hits in. Meanwhile, back up top, Moose was able to snipe out a Courier. K1's Courier as well, so... Not a bad play there from the Marana, but as you said, this is a lot of... Uh, sort of side stories, a lot of tangential plays for Moose, just very briefly connected to his lane before he's off again. Yeah, and it really is just with how fast Speed was able to get the Helm of Ironwell, and Hector, oh. uh, he's just dead. He's yep. just decided to, yeah, he gets his Courier Snipe, doesn't get that much regen, his 5 is pulling, so just decides to eat the death but take a creep wave, but that was the most Hector death I think I've seen in in, uh, in this tournament so far from him. Yeah, I mean, that that is the quintessential one, right? Because that wasn't even a fight against Speed, he's just saying, I'm going to have last hits. I'm getting them. You're not going to stop me. Sure, you can kill me, but for some reason, I don't care. But it's not going to be too big of a deal for him. This, though, is where things get concerning. This is Moose rotating bot. They're going to look to make a play here. No one can step in front of that arrow, so Sacred is going to get himself taken down. And, well, yeah, Schofield gets stunned, but he should be able to fall back. But this is where Moose's previous play kind of comes into effect, right? You... You taught a behavior. They got used to Moose just not being in lane, and they figured he's still out there somewhere farming. Instead, he rotates in, and they find a pretty big kill. Yeah, and then Kits gets lucky with the rune. Isn't the most impactful rune, but still could make a play on Dark Mago before any supports get here with sentries, and they're looking for an arrow angle, and will they find it? This is hard, yeah, but it, it will connect, and, well, he needs to remnant back, and I think Dark Mago will survive, but... A lot of good damage. He will have to uh, either go back to base or just kind of sit back and wait for his bottle to heal him up. And then Stinger shows up, but okay, both supports now. They say we're not going to get out rotated in game three, but oh, the glimpse. Really the glimpse. This is, uh, I don't know if this is great because yeah, Dark Mago comes back in. He's going to get punished for it. They find the kill on the moves, but they're going to lose more. Schofield caught by the ice path. A uh, little bit more damage. Kits, does he have shards? Not for seven. But the DOT will do it. AB1 gets in there for the kill, and that just feels like they force themselves into a play. The supports make a good rotation, and Dark Mago gets away. That honestly should have just been the end of it, and they get a little bit greedy. They go back in, and they end up losing. 
No, and not done. Dark Mago, he's in behind. They were very aware of that remnant, but with the piecemeal build, Sinker's just gonna go down. Just no damage from the Ember and no quick damage, and maybe he gets a trade onto AV1. But this is one of the downsides of Dark Mago's skill build. Early, until he has those higher levels, just that isn't great at one single thing. Mm -hmm. And as crazy as that reinitiation mid is, ET, uh, we also need to point out K1 got picked off. In the top lane, mm -hmm. speed pops the shapeshift, and well, honestly, that doesn't make the mid fight irrelevant, but it makes their gains significantly less impactful because well, the alchemist obviously wasn't farming while that was happening. Yeah, just good damage and no rebuttal either, and just run down. Um, the Dominator gets finished, level seven on speed. He's still just having a phenomenal game, and it's where hopefully. Stinger's been getting the stacks going, and he's got a few stacks here and there, but eventually Moose will walk into the jungle and should get an idea of what's waiting for that Alchemist when he starts to rotate out. I don't know if Schofield wants this fight, though. Schofield's going to realize some pretty bad yeah. things pretty soon here. Moose is able to leap into the cog, so Schofield should still be going down. The Wolves even get it, so it's not a support swooping in to steal. There's another kill into the offlaner's hands. 3-0 and oh now for the Lycan, and... Listen, you're already going to lose the experience battle because he's getting the solo XP. Don't give him extra money either, but... Feels like it's too late. He's top of the net worth, and... Kits is looking for an engagement here. Speed doesn't have shapeshift, though, so he really won't be able to help, and... Yeah, they're just going to have to get themselves out. Moves will fall, but... His sacrifice allows Kits to get away. Speed did get some damage onto the tower, but not enough to truly threaten it. Yeah, and Schofield, you know, though. They get this dive. They know he TP'd in, so there's no real place for him to go. They are trying to bring the Ember yet again, but I feel like this is just too long of a TP. This light's coming through, but they're trying to get the Weaver involved as well. And do they get the kill? Kits, but there's a shapeshifted, very angry wolf here. Snowball's back up. He's going to take some time to reposition while Speed does some damage. They take Singer out the arrow. It gets him on the back end. He didn't see it oh, coming. Oh, no, and there's a ET. punch. And now Sacred's going to get taken. Ooh, not quite yet. Okay, the time lapse is useful. But will it be enough? He is on the run. Shikushi, giving him some extra movement, but that is a very angry wolf behind you. And he is still going to go down, so... Beast Coast, unfortunately, just kind of waterfall their way in and moves. I mean, if that arrow doesn't hit onto the Ember Spirit, we are looking at a very different fight, but the aim is on point, the timing's even better, and Five Rat take the win pretty definitively. Yeah, but also a fight that they knew they could flood TPs to. They just killed the Clockwork, who had just TP top, who, mm. you know, albeit would have thrown more spells into that engagement, but they just get the perfect 4v3. In a situation as well, where Hector also pretty, you know, much just said, I'm not helping. You guys do it. It has to be you. And then it just ends up blowing up in their face, and Speed's game continues to accelerate. He's going to have, like, a 13-minute Helm of the Overlord, in which then... Five Rat will just swing for that Roche way sooner than they have in the rest of the game. This is that rotation, though. And now, Speed can't TP out just yet. And yeah, now he would be able to TP out, but he is stuck. And they do cast pretty much every ultimate onto him. And he's going to yeah. maybe get a trade on a skill field. But that's the play that needed to be made. And Singer, well, he might also die too. It's one sacred. Oh, that's a problem. Now, if it had just been the supports, we're looking at a pretty solid trade. But with uh, the loss of sacred and... Honestly, maybe Dark Mago? He jumps back to the Remnant, but Kits, he doesn't have any spells. If he had something, that could have been even worse, but... That's still a loss, right? Three for two in Five Rats' favor. The Tier 1 tower ended up going down. Kits is still hunting, actually. Does he have the punch? Uh, kind of, but he doesn't want to use it right now because he sees the TPs coming in. Ooh, and they've gone that's too a far. lot of TPs. Dark Mago just needs to make sure he doesn't get popped, but I feel like he might be fine. Snowball, Hold can he dodge Mago. it? No, he can't. The punch comes through, but it's not enough damage. Dark Mago should be able to get himself out. <laughs> it's, at, at this point, even if he dies, he has bought a lot of time. Four heroes go looking for him, and on the other side of the map, they're going to look for K1. They know he cannot possibly have help. There you go. All that effort to take down the Tusk, and you still end up losing your carry on the other side. Yeah, and DNM is completely untouched. All of the attention onto the Lycan, who has shape shipped up again, so Beast Coast have to be very careful of making that same play onto speed, but 
Zero pressure onto DNM. Nice bump back mid though. Could be your free pick onto the Jakiro and kind of looks like it. AB1's running out of time. He's juking, <laughs> he's jiving. One more slight though and yeah. Uh, he did a little bit of dancing. Got to give him credit for that, but does still end up going down. But Kitz is looking for an opportunity here. Not really going to find it, but I mean, this is a little bit of what we talked about, right? I mean, it's come earlier than maybe expected, but Kitz has been unbelievably focused on just getting in, finding picks, because he knows DNM is farming, speed is farming, they're going to do damage, so if I can just keep on finding pickoffs, keep on finding initiations, they're in a solid spot. However, Moose is in a little bit of danger here. Snowball does come through, that's going to stun Stinger. They're able to turn it into a trade-off, but now DNM is getting involved, Ice Path is going to come through. The Ember just jumped into that Ice Path, and... I don't really know if they want this engagement anymore. This is starting to get a little bit too complicated. They'll at least get the AB1 kill. Sacred grabs, Sacred grabs the double, and then they back off. Yeah, and I think this is very smart from Beast Coast, saying that speed might be a little bit too big, so we're going to take the fight elsewhere, take the fight on your supports instead, and that's something that speed isn't really able to help all that much out with. It's something that the Lycan just wasn't able to do in the draft. You're not going to be able to cover for AB1 and Moose. They're really out on their own. At least Moose is maybe slightly harder to kill with the Marana, but it's where AB1 really has no other play other than to just lay out for his own life whenever that play is made. But Speed gets some alone time. Helm of the Overlord is done if they want to. Looking for that early Roche is certainly a possibility. But this is also where Five Rat would like to collapse on that mid-tier 1 tower. It's already very low, but they would like a uh, kind of quick and easy play resulting in a pick to uh, button that mid tower going down. But they're getting stonewalled a little bit. They're waiting. Of course, during the daytime, as we uh, spoke about in the EG series, always going to favor the Disruptor and Stinger. A lot of damage in their wolves and an arrow, just in case. Able to find themselves the pick. They don't get onto the cores, at least, so East Coast have that to sort of help them. But that push onto the Tier 1 tower is coming. Maybe not yet, though. Might Hold just on. do it, but they really want to try for sacred. Yeah, they'll, they'll be chill. They'll move back. They're still taking a lot of the map away from East Coast, and East Coast have to get rid of this high ground ward before they can ever look at rotating towards top, unless they want to go for what feels like a pretty nasty smoke. But I don't think East Coast win a full five on five fight right now. They still need to wait for K1 to be just a little bit bigger. And Sacred, TP's top, wouldn't defend the tier two. This is damage that really shouldn't land, but they're gonna start coming in. Bayalk is getting involved before BKB. This is a dangerous moment, but do they just run? They're trying Stable to. Stable concoction hits, but there's gonna be the Moonlight Shadow. They get to decide, do they wanna go back in? They see an opportunity, they're gonna spot Schofield first. The Cogs do push him back. That Static Storm though, that is not well placed. It's gonna keep Schofield alive maybe. No, it's not, the arrow still hits him. And this fight's getting very awkward. Ice Path gonna get thrown down. They're able to lock up the Ember Spirit, but AB1's the only one actually doing any damage. The rest of the lineup has chosen to retreat. Speed though, still being chased. There's gonna be the Searing Chains that takes all the time out from, uh, oh boy, from his Shapeshift. Can they actually finish him off though? The DOT may be enough and it will be. And now if you're DNM, who do you focus on? Arrow will connect. They're going to hit up Sacred. They get the punch. They get the kill. They take down Stinger. They've got the Snowball now into Dark Mago. Can he jump to the Remnant? Yes, he can. But he's still... He's still got hit by an Urn Charge there, so he's not making a clean getaway just yet. He's not out of dodge. He doesn't have Remnants anymore. Kits is going to catch him. The Ensnare comes through first. Unstable Concoction, though. Does stun up to... Will that be enough? He's got the Sleight of Fist. The punch, though, is going to knock him into the air. He is so unbelievably low in AB1. Well, back from the grave, hits the ice path, and they find the kill. K1, I don't know about this. Yeah. He gets the stun down, but immediately backs off. Yeah, just even though it's hard to tell who ends up the winner of that fight, because K1's able to walk away and you lose Schofield, so your clockwork ends up not really having very much to do, but the rest of the cores are okay. And I think not losing the Alk before his BKB and also getting the Lycan kill still feel pretty darn good for Beast Coast, even though you lose Dark Mago at the end. But still, I think gold-wise, uh, Five Rat come out ahead, and they get to use their Shapeshift, which is already only on a 20-second CD. It's where I'm still waiting for that moment where Five Rat feel comfortable enough to go into the pit, because it is slowly but surely coming. DNM might not be the one to rotate in, but it's where Speed on his lonesome, honestly, could spark that fight. And they smoke up again. 
pushing their way really back up into that same position. And this is the thing for Five Rat. This is where they would love for fights to happen. If somebody comes up to fight them, they fight. If somebody doesn't come up to fight them, they keep pushing onto that Tier 2 tower basically for free. So, area of the map that they really want to control. And if you're Beast Coast, are you willing to, to send TP's top like you did before? Because things got very messy in the aftermath. Maybe this time they just kind of you know, let the glyph do its thing and hope for the best. Yeah, and really, Beast Coast, they're finally getting onto it, but time to take out this bottom tier 1 tower. They've been slow on uh, on that front, or even in mid, I think, getting those waves in. I don't think Beast Coast are going to make a defense of this top tower. There are just too many items coming in tow for them to really want to risk anything, but... Where DNM will show up mid, he'll try to get the Weaver out of here, and the Weaver will get kicked out, but as Five Rat now cut in, they have to fight for this high ground. And if they take out the vision, this is where that Roche gets very easy for Five Rat to instigate. As mid, looking at Dark Mago, oh, as a remnant, him. but he get hit by the ice path. Uh Static Storm's too late, he's already dead. I th I thought honestly the play was gonna be the Song of the Siren. It was just coming back up when they pushed in, but Hits with the blink, and the ice path placement is is honestly just as good, if not better, because it's on a hell of a shorter cooldown. And now they go into the pit. Yeah, and now the moment that Beast Coast would have wanted to fight and contest, and they even are kind of lurching closer with this BKB, it's not going to make it. And Schofield gets his hook blocked. They have to get settle for the kill onto Moose, even though they're certainly going to have to work for it a little bit more, but they're going to lose Schofield's life, and the Aegis gets claimed. This is not the fight that they want. Now they're stuck in it. There's going to be the song being deployed. Not lasting very long, though, because at this point they kind of realize, yeah, we, we just want to get back into the engagement. They'll take Schofield out. BKB, though, activated by K1. So the Ice Path is not going to lock him up. He's able to get onto AB1. So that's both of the supports being taken down, but now, well, now they need more. They're trying to get the Aegis out of Kits' hands. They will be able to do so. But look at Speed pushing in. Honestly, not doing as much damage as he needs to, though. Speed may actually go down. Dark Mago is going to be able to get him. Kits, though, did help finish off the kill onto Sacred, but now his second life is not really looking so hot. He's going to get glimpsed back. Buyback from Moose, though, trying to rejoin in the engagement. The Thunderstrike, though, ends up doing enough damage. But now if you're Beast Coast, you may have overcommitted. Dark Mago gets taken down. So all of a sudden, K1, you're on the front line alone. They're trying to bring the supports over to help. Schofield can drop the cogs, perhaps. That's not dropping the cogs. He goes in. Now the cogs will be deployed, but Moose just leaps out of it and... K1, do you really want to go back in? He's thinking about it, but sides against it pretty quickly. He will self-stun, though, but I don't know if they see him. DNM is now going to get the vision. Can he get the ensnare? Didn't have it. Still on cooldown for one second, and then the glimpse pulls him back. But you see, I don't know what's going on, but this game is starting to develop a trend of, like, four-minute long fights. Nobody wants to give yeah. it up. Yeah, and Speed didn't have that much of his ultimate there at the end. He had used it to try and get damage to make sure that Roche actually got claimed before the full team fight started. But in very similar fashion to Game 1, they win the initial fight with their Alchemist BKB, which makes sense. That is the Alk's power spike. Five Red don't kite it out. And they barely come out ahead gold-wise, but I think mostly because of Moose buyback. I'm just worried now for Beast Coast, once the rest of Fire Rat start looking at items like the BKBs, like this AC that Speed has on the back burner, uh, that's where the game becomes a whole level of new difficulty. It's where Dark Mago's trying to keep pace. He's also looking for a BKB. We're getting to that next stage of Dota, but it's where you never want to drag your Alk there. You always want to be ahead. You always want to have heroes that are useful whenever the Alk's strong. You don't want to be forced into waiting for this Ember's items. Because Hector just finished AC. He is incredibly strong. They want to make a play. You just wonder who else is ready to make a play with him. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, Kits and the supports continue just patrolling their way through that north side jungle. They didn't find anyone this time, but they have really kind of made that their, their hunting grounds. Continuously pushing in, dropping wards as they go, so... And it makes sense, right? You're playing up against Alec, you're playing up against really a, a trio of core heroes that are all going to want to farm, so if you can stay in that north side jungle with any degree of consistency, you're taking those opportunities away. And look at this, the push in, getting pressure onto that tier one, Glyph comes out, and how will you decide to defend this? Five Red have so much more vision, but it is daytime. This is where there's Disruptor Glimpse backs, that's why they're hiding in the trees right now. And Song! Well, they Set lost up the on tower. The sacred. 
Yeah, they're just gonna go straight in onto Sacred. Can they get the kill? Yes, they can. K1, though. Oh, he popped the BKB, he popped the Chemical Rage. They did get the Static Storm down, so they're trying to go for kits here, and he doesn't have any spells available, so... They will make the trade, but now K1 might be in some trouble. Chemical Rage comes to an end. He is getting locked down. Can anyone get over here to help him? They're gonna try to force staff him out. That does allow the Alchemist to retreat for now. He'll self-stun, but it won't be enough to kill. And then back on the other side of the fight, Dark Mago... Um... Didn't, didn't have a remnant, I guess? I mean, he has got one mid, he just didn't get the chance to jump to it. Yeah, just got orchided by the tail end of the fight with DNM, and then there was just barely enough damage. But that was a fight where Speed had the shapeshift the entire team fight. It was paced out perfectly, and I think that's where Beast Coast just showed their hand a little bit too fast. He just chem raged so early to make sure that tower push got started that Hector slowly but surely became the front runner in a fight that he didn't have enough gas in the tank for and then as soon as the bkb is gone as soon as the chem rage ends there's no option except for him to retreat which both sacred and dark mago are not thrilled for because then it means that they're the ones that have to carry the team fight i think also the song setup was just perfect just beautifully played it's just simple it's ice path in the song without bkbs it's easy in mid uh it might be time to go they're gonna drop the chain stun AB1 may end up paying for this play here. He's going to try to TP home. Dark Mago takes him out beforehand. Unstable Concoction, meanwhile, does manage to hit up Kits. Where is the Snowball going to leave him? Right back where he was, but honestly, that's not going to work out for him. He's going to take the DOT, and he does get taken down, so... Hmm. Five Rat... Well, they just try to do a little bit too much there. They assume Sacred's by himself, and it is a nice setup onto him, but... With the reinforcements there, they were quickly outnumbered. Yeah, and trying to abuse the high ground vision that they got after being the winners of that previous fight, but uh, just too far. Uh, a fix, and an easy fix for Kits, though. As soon as he has that BKB, then he can really afford to be that crazy man going in, do whatever, whatever he wants, and there's no ags in sight for Stinger. He's not rushing for it. He's deciding to buy the little items in tow, which certainly uh, have their own value. Not like he should be rushing the ags just yet, but... A lot of scary items still coming through on both sides. Items, though, that, again, kind of favor Five Rat, because you're playing to the same speed of that Alchemist. And I think once the speed could be on Dark Mago's finish, which it is, you've got maybe a little bit more to play for with him just going crazy on those supports. And there's not that many four staffs, not that many Lotus Orbs for Five Rat, but the cores are still monsters. And once the could be is done on that Tusk, then you're really not going to be afraid of all too much. They're TP on top to maybe get a play going on Hector, but Manta showed off. Casual dispel. Can't get onto him. He's able to walk away. Uh, you know, it's a little bit of a defensive itemization after having already gotten your BKB, but just doesn't want to get himself caught. As Speaking of caught, AB1, I mean, he goes for the D ward and he gets it, but now things get a little bit awkward. Static Storm's been deployed. Kits is in trouble. BKB not finished off yet, so he's dead in the song. I mean, it comes out, but it's going to be... Ooh, it's going to be defensive in nature. They're just trying to get themselves away. Moose uses all of his leap charges to avoid getting caught next to the enemy. Five rat force staff. I believe they're going to get everyone out of here. Moose is hit by the spirit vessel. Oh, but now they've got the glimpse onto him, so he is going to get pulled back in. Uh, DNM, this is not where you want to be. Already used his song. Doesn't have magic immunity. He's going to try to fall back. Unstable concoction, though, will hit him, and they're just diving into the base. DNM goes down and five rat that very little of that needed to happen. Multiple heroes get kind of caught in between. The decision making is a little bit questionable and well, the punishment is there. Four dead. Yeah, and really only thing expended was more or less the BKB on your alchemist. They just got ran down and in a position where they knew that speed doesn't have shapeshift. So why should he why should they be scared when the Lycan is a non-factor in the team fight, and it's where Kits needs some lane time? This high ground push is a little bit wild. Of course, without the BKB, he can't really stick around for all too long, but Hemrage is still too much healing, and without the Vessel, because the Marana's dead, it feels like free damage. Easy for him. And Five Rat really need to reset. Give a lane to Kits. Let him get his item. Let him be the crazy tusk. But he keeps on getting caught out in situations where he's getting hit up by the chains. He's getting hit up by the static storm. And then he just dies without doing very much at all. At a certain, to a certain extent, you want to 
stay on the offensive as he has been for most of this game, but if those hits stop connecting, if you stop finding the kills, then yeah, you need to take a step back, finish off this PKB just through the conventional uh, farming route, and you know, go back in for it then. Instead, this feels like Kits is almost kind of trying to bash his head against the wall, and uh, I don't know how much experience you have with that situation, E.T., but from my experience, the wall wins the majority of the time. And this is a lucky stroke of faith, though. Gets to claim all of this vision in the outpost near the Roche pit with 30 seconds to go. It's where, still, Beast Coast with the clockwork. Have the flare, they'll have that instant safe vision to play around, but Five Rat have just as good vision and even better wars into the nighttime. And they see Sacred, they walk him going a straight line. One shot though. That's gonna break this up. Schofield does eat the arrow as well. He might end up dying for this, but his teammates, I mean, they're already into the engagement. So yeah, okay, Schofield goes down, but... Well, actually, I was gonna say, what's the cost gonna be? But right now, the cost is nothing. Five Rider just dominating this fight. Dark Mago has to pop his BKB to run. That means Sacred is left in the middle of the fight, but he does get the time lapse off, and here comes K1, pushing his way forward. Speed and Kits both taken down. DNM now in some trouble. Doesn't have the song anymore. The Abyssal Stun is going to lock him down. They need to get this kill, and they do manage to get it. The Naga Siren will fall. No buyback available. And it was iffy for a long time there, ET, but they pull it out. Do they go back into the Roche Pit now? Because... I don't know if they have the numbers to go up to the high ground, so... Yeah. Looks like they'll fall back, but... They managed to pull it out. The two supports die kind of early in the fight, but they're the only ones who go down. Yeah, and then with the bug, with the acid spray, this is not a difficult Roche, but... Five Rat don't want to give it away for free, but illusions are pestering, and... There is still so much Five Rat vision, and it just didn't matter in that fight. Get Dark Vega the Aegis let him become that risky core. They spent so much of that engagement chasing around the Ember Spirit. And then the three-man concoction doesn't help either. But Hector cannot be allowed to hold his BKB that long. He only needed to use it until maybe the last 15 seconds of that team fight. And then at that point, you've already lost all of your cores. And you still need the BKB on the Tusk before he can really play Dota. And that buyback certainly doesn't help to that front. It's where I think finally you're seeing uh, Beast Coast get a lot of that momentum. And now, Dark Mega doesn't have to worry about only having one item. He won a team fight. He's got an Aegis. Now he can be the crazy man that the Tusk wants to be, and he gets to become more of a hard farmer. It's where that 20k gold lead now for Beast Coast is just deafening. Gofield, where the hell did you get all this gold, bud? He's got a full Crimson Guard picked up, and we saw that before in one of the previous matchups. Crimson Guard against the Naga Siren is... Uh not always successful but it is going to be at least relatively useful in terms of just giving them that little bit of extra durability right it's probably not going to be enough to single-handedly allow you to survive but if the schofield and stinger can last one or two seconds longer that's static storm deployed right that's a hook shot potentially getting off so it's an interesting pickup but i am just surprised schofield has the money for it yeah, it's also niche versus the Lycan. Just the guaranteed damage block versus the creeps is what keeps their backline alive. And that is really the difference between these team fights is that Schofield and Stinger get to stay alive. They get their ultis off. They are getting to play Dota. It's where you can't really say the same for Moose or AV1 anymore. They're just under so much pressure. They need to get a lot of their skills off. They can't afford to just throw out an ultimate and then die like the Clockwork and the Disruptor really can. It's where he constantly needs to be surviving. And DNM, mm. well, that's a nifty position, but there's the setup. You find the lion, and will they be able to burst him? No, BKB early. Yep, Dark Mako pops it, jumps in. They get the root onto Moose, so the Mirana has to fall back. This is eh, this is not looking fantastic. They lose that lane of Rax and really just don't get the initiation that they wanted. It's... Not a bad attempt, but so many moving parts had to hit all at the same time, and obviously, as we saw, Dark Mago just kind of ruins it with his BKB. He had the Aegis anyway, too, but True. with the Alk showing bottom, they smoke out, they say that maybe we can get a straggler, maybe we can go past someone, but problem is, 
without the Naga back in the base, as soon as those creeps are hitting that top tower, or those top moon wells, well, Beast Coast know that you're not home. You're somewhere else. And then, as soon as speed shows on this word in the triangle, then Beast Coast know that, okay, time to close in on bottom, push in mid, get that bottom tier 2, and then they probably have another stab at the high ground. They're just playing this so well on the Beast Coast side. Doing their best to make sure that they don't make any sort of well, any sort of sizable mistakes at this rate, right? Because they already put themselves in an awkward position a little bit earlier on in this game, but it seems to be in the past at this point, ET. They have really re-established control. Mm. At this point, I'm sorry, I'm just sort of looking at this from the 5 rap perspective. How do they sort of put this team fight together? Because it feels like at this point the song is less and less that sort of just trump card and more just we need the song just to make sure we get in in the first place yeah and same push same situation minute on the aegis and they're going the long wrap around and okay moose gets scouted and then gets immediately picked off by stinger just an immediate reaction there is a buyback on the mirana but gotta make sure the rest of the lineup doesn't go out and i don't even know if they're aware that the shape's just been committed but speed wasn't able to connect with anything and now that is really the back-breaking spell that they're going to be missing he's only got another 10 seconds left and then he's not a wolf well they're going to give it a go but here comes dark mago onto the back line looking to help out k1 they get the stuns down they've got the naga isolated and dnm still doesn't have his money for buyback he is out of the fight he is 50 seconds down and well now they know that they didn't know before speed comes in no shape shift he's dead ab1's dead kits dropping low Able to pop the snowball, but this is really not going to be enough to help him. He dies the second he comes out on the other side of it. East Coast may have really just kind of slammed the door in their opponent's face, because what is there left to fight with? There are two buybacks, one on the Jakiro, one on the uh, one on the Lycan, but no macro, no shapeshift. The, the buybacks wouldn't really matter even if they use them. Oh, and now your Megas just lost all the steam in their boat that tier four is i don't know it's just too much there's too much net worth there's too many tanky heroes they're not calling it because why would you call it on elimination but at this point they've got half of a team fight left dnm's gonna try his hardest here and oh maybe if uh... dark mango dies to the fountain but <laughs> yeah he's got the eggs last tier four has fallen there's no glyph if he's gonna get this ancient below half hp it's probably just hidden that's a hell of an ulti from stinger blocks off everybody else. The song, he's trying everything, but don't know. Speed's got to kill everyone somehow here. It's just not going to be enough. They're focusing the objective. The Ancient is still falling, so even if they are able to get in for a fight, they're not going to be able to stop this push. I mean, they're doing their best. They're doing everything in their power. It's just that's not enough. Speed goes down, Ancient will fall, and Beast Coast will be moving on to the next round. Uh, a result that five rat are gonna be a little heartbroken over defending champions unable to defend their title but also just oh uh, with the way the series went down uh, nobody's happy and i think that's where beast coast themselves they played a great game of dota here they turn it around i think five rat were in an incredibly good position coming off of those first 15 minutes but then they start playing elk they start finding the weak links that chaos gets started where beast coast are just simply able to find the mirana and the jakiro first and then you realize for five rep that really there isn't that much setup in front of you and if kits ever starts dropping the ball there's nobody else to pick up the slack it's the drawback of this lichen where you've got a straight shot to victory but if you ever get off that path there really isn't a great way back into it and beast coast just ride that wave hmm. solid performance from them and you know, I said during the draft when we saw the speed lichen come out, I said Tusk could play almost single-mindedly on uh, on the initiation, on the aggression. That that was supposed to be maybe a little bit more figurative, more metaphorical, because, yeah, Kits ran into some problems. Really, really wish he'd have just kind of taken that step back and focused on that BKB instead of making those two or three further attempts that missed out on, because... Um, as you were sort of alluding to, this lineup had to play a certain way. Once you miss, once the gap is closed, you don't really have a way to get it back. You had your sort of one shot at maintaining momentum, and once it's gone, it's gone. 
Yeah, and then we never got to see the rubber band sling back like it did in game one, where mm -hmm. Five Rider winning the first 10, then Beast Coast are winning the next 10, and then Beast Coast throw in an effort to try and get high ground early. They just didn't even set themselves up in that same position because I think Dark Mega was on a way more comfortable hero to scale. But uh, still, I think it's unfortunate and definitely not the result that Five Rider were looking for. But Beast Coast don't go out early. They don't get to play uh, only five games of Dota. They get to play six and a few more and they make it to that next stage, which is certainly the result that Beast Coast were hoping for. Mm -hmm. And the means that they get there will obviously have some controversy attached, but if you're Beast Coast, you can't think about that. It was out of your own control, right? Things happening on your opponent's side, so they'll likely put it out of their mind and prepare for the next round. But um, we are going to be moving on to our next series here. It is going to be Wildcard versus Infinity up next. Um, before we get there, though, I'm, I'm not 100% sure as of yet if we're still looking uh, for our winner's interview. That is still up in the air here, so... We'll have an update for you with regards to that probably in the next minute or two. So one way or another, it's either the winner's interview coming your way or the start of Wildcard versus Infinity. So stick around and we'll be back to let you know what's going down.